Hi everyone. So based on a recent community poll that I did, I got the highest number of votes for doing videos based on Java threads and concurrency. So that is why I started the series on threads and concurrency related coding questions. We have already uploaded one video on that. So this is the first question as part of the series on threads coding questions that we have already done. And today we are going to do the second question as part of the series. So the main the core concepts behind threads are already covered as part of a different series, which is the multi-threading Java series in which I have covered from scratch already about threads. How do we create so based on knowledge that you get from this series is what you're going to apply in doing the coding questions. The biggest reason why I wanted to start the series is because although we have a lot of theoretical concept based YouTube videos on threads and concurrency, there are very few which actually do, there are very few which actually does the hands on coding questions on threads and concurrency and there can be so many variations on that. So that was the biggest reason I have started a separate series on threads and concurrency. So let's get started with the question. So today's question is implement a thread safe counter class. So you have to implement a thread safe counter class which will support the increment operation and decrement also. There should be multiple threads which should be able to increment and decrement the counter concurrently without any race condition. So this is the condition which we have. So what it means, what is thread safe? That can be the first question. If I have a shared resource and I have two threads T1 and T2 manipulating the same resource. I should be at the end of the day not have any race condition which means I shouldn't have any kind of an incorrect result and this is the very reason why synchronization mechanism has been introduced. So if there are two threads so what it means in this context is there's a counter class so this is our counter variable this is the counter variable initially which is zero and then there is t1 and there is t2 both of them are trying to manipulate the same count so t1 is trying to do the increment t2 is trying to do the decrement. So imagine this, count is initially 0, T1 is running 10 times, so count became 10 now from 0 to 10, T2 has decremented all this while, so count will become 0, so this is the ideal condition. So this is an ideal condition when such low number of iterations are involved, that T1 and T2 are only running 10 times, then this condition will always be true, in which even if we don't do any kind of a major synchronization mechanism, we will be able to see that we are getting the same result always. There will be no race condition. This only happens when there are, let's say, 10,000 iterations. Okay, 10,000 um, times the thread are doing the increment decrement operations. There are more number of threads. In that kind of a scenario, we need some thread safety to be introduced. Now, you might wonder that, okay, uh, it is just a simple increment and decrement operator that T1 has to just increment from 0 to 1 and T2 has to decrement from 1 to 0. What is the problem behind this? The problem behind this is that any kind of an update like this happens in three steps. I would already talked about this in the race condition uh, types of uh, race condition video. So this is happening in three steps. One is the value is read. So when T1 is trying to modify, it will first read the value of the count. After that, it is going to modify the value. So when T1 and T2 is trying to modify, either they're trying to do an increment or they're trying to do an decrement. So first is read, second is modify, third is write or update. So this is the final where they have to write that variable back into the memory. So three steps are there. So when there are large number of threads involved or the threads are running multiple number of times, there is an interference in these three operations. These three operations ideally should be atomic which means all or none, like either you perform all three operations together at a time or you don't perform it. If you say like, I will read the variable and then I'll go to sleep and then I'll come back and modify and then again I'll go to sleep, I'll not write. So that cannot happen. If you do that, it will be inconsistent data. So that is what happens when we don't introduce any thread safe mechanism. So we are going to see how can we write the code for this. Initially, we'll see how, what is the problem, what happens, and then we are going to modify the code and introduce atomicity in the code so that it can be thread safe. Cool, so let's start with the code changes. So here is the problem statement that we have and uh, the code will be available in the GitHub repository. Please check out in the description. So let's start with the code changes. So what do we need? Let's have a counter variable first, which we want to manipulate. So I'll call it private end count. Now let's write the implementation for the thread. So, so let's call one thread as T1. And this needs to run, let's say, 100 times. So what it is going to do? So what this is going to do is just going to increment the counter. So I'm just going to say this dot count. So to make it static also. We're going to say count plus plus. This is the increment operation. And similarly, this is going to be, let's call it increment 
task and similarly we are also going to have a decrement task over here so let's call this as the decrement task and this is just going to decrement the value of the count so we have the two threads now with us let's start the threads so we have the two runnable instances now we have to initialize those and we will start the threads Since they are going to run in a loop and the main thread can terminate, so we also have to call the join method because it throws an exception. We have to enclose within try. So we can say we'll wait for increment to finish. We'll also wait for decrement to finish. And then finally, we also need to print out the value of this count. Like what is the result value of this? So we will say that final. We can say final count equal to the count. Okay, let's run this. We got the final count is equal to zero. So far, so good. We have just incremented and decremented. There are two threads. Let's try to increase the number of iteration to 1000 and let's run this. So, 1000 times T1 will increment and the increment task will increment and decrement task is decremented at 1000 times. Final count is also zero. Now let's try to make this 10,000. Now let's try to run this. We should have got zero, but we are not able to get that. So exponentially, when the number of iterations are increasing, the more number of times the threads are going to run, we are getting a different result, which is not zero. So we got 2863. Now I'm running it again. I am getting a negative number. Let me run it a couple more times. So every time I am running, I am getting a different output. And this is what was meant by the race condition of the incorrect or the inconsistent result. So now in, now in order to establish the atomicity of the operation of increment and decrement, we are going to introduce a new class called atomic integer. So how is that going to be? So we'll write over here, atomic integer, we'll call it counter new atomic integer and we'll initialize this to zero so if we take a look at this class it says that we use this it is what is an atomic integer it is an int value that may be updated it is an int value that may be updated atomically and this atomic integer is used in applications such as atomically incremented counters and this is what our requirement is so if you want you can go through this class to understand in detail so this is part of the java.util.concurrent.atomic package so we have initialized this to zero now you can see that these are marked in red because it doesn't work that way so this object that we have now there are methods over here which is increment and get and decrement dot get so again if you take a look at this method it says that it will atomically increment the concurrent value do you remember what we said whenever an operation of increment and decrement is happening it is happening in three steps read modify write so in this case whenever you are calling this increment dot get it is happening in atomic operation which means all the operations done at one go there is no interruption in between so this is for the increment and similarly we'll also call it for decrement.get that's it and finally we want to get the value of this so we can just do counter.get and now instead of running this 10000 times let's first try to run it 1000 times and see what is happening just to ensure if we are getting the same result. So we got final count zero. So our issue occurred when we have this running for 10,000 times. Now let's run this. So we get the final count as zero, even if the iterations are 10,000 at a time for increment and decrement. Let's run this a couple of times to understand if at all we are getting a race condition kind of a scenario or not. So I'm running it two, three times. And we see that every time we run this, the final count is still zero. Even if I increase it by uh, 1 lakh, it is not causing any race condition. And that is what the expectation is, right? So in this way, we are able to write a thread safe counter, which is supporting the increment and decrement operation without any race condition.